Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the book Prisoners of Geography by Tim Marshall. Today we're going to be talking about USA. Location, location, location. Tim Marshall begins his chapter about US geography. He starts by highlighting the importance of the unification of the United States of America. The physical geography is quite impressive. First, there is the East Coast Plain leading to Appalachian Mountains, an area well watered by short but navigable rivers and with fertile soil. Then heading farther west, you have the Great Plains stretching all the way to the Rocky Mountains, and within this section lies the Mississippi Basin with its network of huge navigable rivers flowing into the Mississippi River, all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico, which is sheltered by the peninsula of Florida and several islands. Once over the massive mountain range that is in the Rockies, you get to the desert, the Sierra Nevada Mountains, a narrow coastal plain, and finally to the shores of the Pacific Ocean. To the north, above the Great Lakes lies the Canadian Shield, the world's largest area of Precambrian rock, much of which forms a barrier to human settlement. The Southwest Desert. The physical geography does not allow for any attacks on America's land. Two important parts, Canada and to a lesser extent, Mexico. Marshall says, but to achieve this rare geographical position of near invulnerability from conventional attack, first the space had to be acquired and unified. So then he gives us a history of how America was united. Starting from the Declaration of Independence and the Revolutionary War where the land of America actually belonged to the Americans slash colonies. The Louisiana Purchase was basically French handing over Louisiana and the Gulf of Mexico and Mississippi River that came with it. Then, the Transcontinental Treaty gave them this land. America had reached the Atlantic all the way to the Pacific. Home stretch. So Mexico still controlled the land far into America. However, the Texas Revolution of 1835-36 to 36 drove them out of Texas, and then the 1846-48 to 48 Mexican War created the borders of Mexico we now know today. While this was going on, the Monroe Doctrine was issued. In simple terms, the Monroe Doctrine told European powers that once they lost territory in the Western Hemisphere, it was long gone. With this new land, they needed people to settle in it. Coincidentally, the California Gold Rush of 1848 to 1849 helped spread people westward into the new land. Another key part was the Homestead Act of 1862. This is where the government awarded 160 acres of federally owned land to anyone who farmed it for five years and paid a small fee. If you were a poor man from Germany, Scandinavia, or Italy, why would you go to Latin America and be a serf when you could go to the United States and be a free landowning man? Alaska was bought from Russia in 1867 by William Seward. This proved being a great decision from the abundance of gold and oil found in Alaska. The same year, the U.S. secured Cuba, Straits of Florida, and the Caribbean. They also secured Hawaii. This protected their west coast. And to top that in 1903, they signed for the Panama Canal. Trade skyrocketed. Basically, the U.S.'s geography was complete, and now Theodore Roosevelt decided to show the USA's force by circumnavigating the globe. This was called the Great White Fleet. The voyage was an early example of force projection, and it made every major power of the world take note of America's extent. Keeping in mind George Washington's advice from his farewell address in 1796, not to get involved in inveterate antipathies against particular nations and passionate attachments for others, and to steer clear of permanent alliances with any portion of the foreign world. America steered clear as much as they could from both world wars, until they had to join, of course. In the Second World War, when Britain lacked warships, America happened to have 50. America was more than happy to hand them over to Britain for the low price of all their naval bases around the world. On top of that, when Japan was crushed from World War II, the USA took that chance to enforce in the Pacific and Southeast Asia. And guess what? On top of that, Norway, Britain, Italy, and Iceland all gave USA access and rights to all of, all of its naval bases. And to top top that, they formed an alliance with Australia, Korea, and New Zealand in the South and East Asia. Now that they are military stable, the USA focuses on economic stability. They start by securing a hedge money. There are three possible challenges, the EU, Russia, and China. But the EU is economically weak, and Russia is economically and geographically unstable, thus leaving China and Marshall magically predicts the rivalry between USA and China. USA positions itself within East Asia to herd Asian countries away from Chinese influence. Chinese need for foreign oils and gas increases, but USA decreases. 
The USA is growing more self-sustainable and independent. Not just independent, but also a crucial exporter of energy. A lot of people try to put USA in a bad light predicting its downfall, but it's not really true. As Marshall states, for 30 years it has been fashionable to predict the imminent or, or ongoing decline of the United States. This is wrong now as it was in the past. The planet's most successful country is about to become self-sufficient in energy. It remains the preeminent economic power and it spends more and it spends more on research and development for its military than the overall military budget of all other NATO countries combined. Its population is not as aging as Europe or Japan, and a 2013 Gallup poll showed that 25% of all people hoping to emigrate put the United States as their first choice of destination. In the same year, Shanghai University listed what its experts judged the top 20 universities of the world. 17 were in the United States. In the same year, Shanghai University listed what its experts judged the top 20 universities of the world. 17 were in the United States. This was my summary of the USA chapter of The Prisoners of Geography by Tim Marshall. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was helpful. Bye!